uh, there are some candidates here, and, and then I'm going to introduce Bob. So, uh, Rob Chase. Rob Chase, I'm running for legislature, fourth district. Anybody else is running for office today? Okay, let me introduce Bob. <laughs> my favorites because he takes my phone calls <laughs> and he doesn't think I'm crazy because all I want to do is love kids he doesn't realize that that sounds crazy to other people so he is one of our legislators works hard has a heart and listens to people I don't know that there's any better things you can say about a legislator than that mm -hmm. so bye. go right ahead it's really That's right. This is this very is good. <laughs> Bobby Caslin. Thank you. Um, it's a real privilege to be here today. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm here also on behalf of my good friend, Rob Chase, who is our former county treasurer, who did an awesome job as a county treasurer. I think he's eminently qualified to be a state representative. And so I'm endorsing him. and. Uh, I look forward to working with them. We've been doorbelling uh, Sprague Avenue. Uh, Rob did the first half, and I'm coming to the end of the second half of it here pretty soon this next week. And just a really overwhelming positive response from business owners. And also, boy, you get an earful from those business owners. And many of those business owners have asked me who do you support for governor? And I'll, I'll go back to last November. Uh, we were at the House Republican reorganization meeting in last November over at Cleel, and uh, Josh showed up. And uh, he actually wanted us to ask him questions. <laughs> which rarely have I ever seen that happen. And so my background, I was a kindergarten teacher for 20 out of 31 years in public uh -huh. schools, and uh, that was my mission field, honestly. And uh, so I asked Josh, uh, you know, what you stand on early learning, child care and stuff. And this is the first time I've ever heard a politician say, you know, I don't think I'm eminently qualified to speak on that, but I want to learn. Mm -hmm. And that was just <laughs> awesome. <laughs> because, because one of the things that's usually missing from politics is people admitting that they don't know everything. Right. And, but he did give a real cogent mes message about how he wanted to be sure that our state's economy was growing that businesses were being created by people because it was the best environment to create a business. Now, when have you ever heard that, especially here in Spokane, where we're so close to the Idaho border? We hear more and more people who want to move to Idaho yeah. rather than start a business here. So I think, you know, that it's, it's really important that, uh, um, trust me, if, you know, if you're, if you don't, uh, want to vote for Josh, you, you won't get any guff or grief from me. We live still in a mostly free country. And, uh, <laughs> but, I, but I think, you know, it's, it's neat that we're meeting here because the, this whole sex ed thing has and really become just a, and mostly because of what Chris Reichdahl wants to do with it. He's our superintendent of public instruction. I used to serve across the aisle from him, and uh, and he was on the education committee with me. So anyway, we, we got this bill that was coming forward on sex ed, and, and I read it, and I went, holy Toledo, I have never mm -hmm. seen anything like this in, in my 31 years of teaching total, and or as a state representative for the last six, and I started reading it, and I, gender identification to elementary school kids. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that, and so I offered five amendments uh, of the total of 11 that the Republicans offered in the Education Committee. And 
you know, the ones that I thought were probably the most important was that the program should be an opt-in program. In other words, if this is such a great thing, then make it opt-in. And the other part was the sex, the sex, the sex um, identity is the best way to put it, I guess. And and my amendment basically got it out there that the people who are at the head of this agenda to push that there's all these different sexes, not just male and female, that that we don't teach that to kids below the fifth grade, fifth grade and under. And, um, and I got yelled at for that by a lady who's a, represent, a representative from the other side of the state who's a school counselor. And I said, well, what, what do you, why do you have a problem with this? And, and she said, well, it's, you know, we can't discriminate against kids. I said, you know, the people that are pushing this agenda can't even agree how many sexes there are. Yeah. They can't, you know? And so that's, that's uh, and, I, and, I, and I noticed that Josh had been kind of at, at the spear point of trying to make sure that, that this would not succeed. And in fact, I, I believe that our 11 amendments in the House, even though the bill passed on the House floor, that that it was it was it was uh, they had to pick the the Senate version because it was not as bad as the House version was going to be and so I don't I don't want to waste any more of your time if you know if afterwards you have you want want to talk to me and have questions I, I think this guy right here is the person you should be talking to the most let me make make that very clear but. Uh, I'm proud, you know, to endorse Josh. And I think one of the things that Josh brings to the table is being able to bring people to the table. Because, you know, we have tremendous divisions in politics nowadays, not just here in Spokane County, but nationwide. And Josh is a person who could bring people together who might be disagreeing on the Republican side. He might even be able to bring some of those uh, moderate de Democrats, which there are very few of them. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if a Democrat anymore says bad things about socialism, then they're immediately ostracized mm -hmm. and threatened in a lot of cases too. So without further ado, Joshua Freed. Mm -hmm.